it's been awfully quiet since the transfer portal opened for Penn State football. And that's not surprising given the obstacles that Penn State has to deal with. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, the last time we took an in-depth look at the transfer portal for Penn State was a week ago, and nothing else has happened really all since then. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts including YouTube, and today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is why I am a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go on now free on the App Store or Google Play. And help me welcome him back as we do weekly, Brian Smith of the Locked On Podcast Network, the recruiting expert, now the transfer portal expert, also hosts Locked On Seminoles, and covers Miami of Florida, Auburn, uh, uh, along with a wide range of other recruiting. So, Brian, we're back here after just a week's time, and Keandre Lambert-Smith entered the transfer portal. We speculated, and then it ultimately did happen, right? The writing was on the wall. And then Malik Mega. so Penn State did lose another wide receiver. With those two on the team, they had 15 scholarship wide receivers, so that position made sense. But the bottom line is, there's been no other movement, whether it's been outgoing, incoming players and there's a reason for that the reason is penn state is still over its scholarship limit and they're also trying to they're trying to build up this nil base so brian i don't know if you've seen this i think i think you have i've they have started a pledge in combination with state media adam brenneman christian hackenberg former penn state players are trying to put together with happy valley united with a goal of setting a five hundred thousand dollar donation pledge from whoever that is, former players, fans, right? Any donors that will contribute to this retain the roar. Well, Brian, that name's very fitting because what have we talked about? Oh, that they have almost 15 players over their scholarship limit and they're trying to retain them. So I imagine that this 500 grand, which is what we ballparked on the last show, is going towards trying to convert whatever, a dozen plus scholarships into NIL funds so that they can keep those players, but that is still going to limit them in the transfer portal because they're not going to get anyone when they don't have the available scholarships. If they're trying just to keep everybody and I still have my doubts about it, I mean, that's a crazy idea. Everybody else just allows the kids to leave on their own accord. Every school is over the number in the spring, Mm -hmm. and that number is 85. If Penn State wants to keep several other kids and use NIL on it, that's fine. But usually those players are the ones that don't play as much or aren't ready to play, et cetera. I think the money could be used in other ways, at least in part, and Penn State be better served in the win-loss record. I mean, there's also the chance that maybe Penn at five hundred thousand dollars. Let's let's just take an example, Brian. Five hundred thousand dollars. Dayon Hayes, who transferred from Pitt, was probably the highest NIL earner. And it, People want to complain about Penn State's NIL presence. It is not good for Pat Narduzzi and the Pitt Panthers. Let me just tell you that in comparison, <laughs> right? So let, if you think their Penn State has problems, ooh, let's let's go west to the west side of Pennsylvania. So Hayes is in the transfer portal. Penn State contacted him. I can only imagine how those conversations went when they're, again, 10 plus over the scholarship limit, and then they're trying to raise $500,000. Brian, a player like Hayes, who just committed to Colorado out of the transfer portal, is probably commanding at least at least five hundred dollars in NIL for just one season. Yeah, five hundred k. Pass rushers are, are rare, man, and mm-hmm. he's a proven pass rusher. Yes. Penn State's not hurting on defense; we know that. But the mm-hmm. same deal with wide receivers. Penn State needs them. They don't need up and coming. They need somebody to come in that's a guy. You're not going to get that for 200K or whatever. You're going to have to spend money up front. Here it is. And then probably try to help them with other corporate sponsors as well. That should be easy for Penn State. But again, if they're using any of this money that they're raising for to keep some of these players around on the roster that are on the back end. And again, I don't know if that's true, but you would be taking money away from other players like Hayes or whoever that you might mm-hmm. otherwise covet in the transfer portal. I'm not sure that's going to work out well. First and two, $500,000 isn't anywhere near what they need. 
Ohio State spent around thirty million dollars on NIL this year, allegedly. Mm-hmm. How do you compete with that if you're not going to pay anybody? I, I have to, I think there's some loose ends here, and mm-hmm. I, I just don't think Penn State likes the moniker of it. But they're not going to be competitive unless they pay with NIL, even if it's transfer portal kids that are proven. You got to do it. So I, I'm curious what the real number is. Yeah, that that might be a goal, right? They're not going and they're not going to stop at five hundred thousand. But Brian, if if that is the plan here, logically it makes sense. Again, we said, hey, if they were going to convert about thirteen, fourteen scholarships, if we're doing kind of that low end figure, it would be about the three hundred fifty thousand to four hundred to five hundred thousand to convert these scholarships to these NIL bonuses, if you will, so that you could take the scholarship away but still give them a free full ride education because that's about what out of state room and board at Penn State would cost for that many players, right? But you're also at the mercy if you don't command those donations. Then you're kind of back in the same spot where you're still looking for a corporate sponsor or somebody else to front the bill. The NCAA's changed its rules, and I I know we're going to talk about that more over the course of weeks and months and how that's going to play out. But Penn State, at the the end of the day, you have 85 scholarships. If you are going to get a game-changing type of player the conversation's not going to be easy, which we said last week was the fact of, hey, oh, hey, we don't have a scholarship for you. We don't have a full ride for you, but we have some NIL bonuses that can go to that. But ultimately, that will take a little bit away from your NIL earnings. And that's that's not going to sit right with former top end four stars and five stars, proven college football veterans that are in the portal. Yeah, I just don't think that's going to work out very much. And when you open the show, what did you say? It's been really quiet. Is that a coincidence? Probably not. Uh, I know Auburn spends a ton of money on NIL, and they just got three kids this weekend on the defensive line. Hmm. It's just the way it is. You can like that. You can dislike it. Um, Kids are going to go where the money is, and if you're going to get them out of the portal, you're going to have to spend it. It's it's that simple, man. Uh, Right now, I'm not liking where Penn State is trending as a program with this. Need to see more effort. To, by the administration, probably first and foremost. Now, this is, let me be clear, this is not a James Franklin problem. He has plenty of others mm-hmm. coaching, but this is an administrative issue with Penn State. Until it's fixed, it wouldn't matter if it was Vince Lombardi in his prime. You're not going to compete. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing, consistently so, to spend money on the transfer portal or it's not going to work. Right. I always wonder that. I think of like the legendary basketball coaches because they're brought up a lot. How would John Wooden do? With NIL, right? Uh, not well, is my guess, but <laughs> yeah, I, it just to, just to name, you know, obviously he's one of the greatest. That's basketball, but one of the greatest ever to do it. But it was a different era, right? We we've seen that it's just not. It, it's different. It, it's not about Brian. It, it's not about football. And I don't want to deviate too much from that. I can go on a rant about that for probably like ten plus minutes straight, and and not let you talk with what's going on with college sports in general. But Penn State, I mean, in the at the same time, Brian. It's not, it, it's quiet because they're not bringing people in, but it's also quiet because people aren't exactly outgoing either. Again, why are players sure. waiting when they are a dozen over the scholarship limit? Because Penn, Penn State has great relationships. Brian, you've said that, but James Franklin builds great relationships oh, with yeah. player from player number one, who's going to be the face of your program, Drew Aller in this case, the top prospects like KJ Winston, Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen, right? All the way down to players who, just who do not have the same type of impact on the roster, do not play as much. James Franklin treats them all the same uniquely right to their individualism, but the same because they are one team and that's respectable. So that goes along with that success with honor, but the same thing we've said for weeks, for months, it is going to limit you. It is going to limit you when you are in this age of college athletics, where it's about dollar signs, NIL player flexibility, everything. And that's what I mean when I say success with honor holds Penn State back. That's that's a good it's a good thing. It's a respectable thing to have. But in this age of the transfer portal, it the, the two just don't fit. They're two opposite, they're two opposite ends of the spectrum. There has to be flexibility. I think that's the safe term to use. Mm-hmm. A special player gets special treatment. Why not for one receiver? They set up something, and part of it could be even corporate. I know certain Mm -hmm. schools do that with like whoever their endorsements are, Penn State's, whoever they have for a bank, whoever they have for the shoe company, whatever, a lender, Mm -hmm. somebody, you can set up a sponsorship and you don't even have to pay it. There are ways to do this. And I'm surprised that Penn State hasn't figured 
the way to get that done. Maybe there's getting ready to be a little run or they get a couple of guys. I don't know. But if they go into next season without addressing that receiver room, Penn State fans are not going to be happy in the fall. Well, so far, only two players have gone into the transfer portal. There's a chance they could technically come back, but no, nothing has happened. DeAndre Lambert-Smith, Malik Mega in the portal. That's it. Nobody else has, has transferred to Penn State. Nobody else has transferred out. So I guess that's, you know, kind of no news is good news in a case, but that's what Penn State's objective is here. And they're going to struggle to land that top player if the, if this is where they're going to stand. Now coming up, what are some of those top targets? Again, they missed on Hayes. They're talking to some key linebackers. They're obviously looking at for a game changer at wide receiver. What are their options? If everything in a perfect world, who could they go get out of the transfer portal? Let's discuss that on the other side of this break. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on each and every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets. That is right, $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots in the NHL, home runs in baseball, to slam dunks in basketball, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. I can attest to that myself. I use FanDuel. So what are you waiting for? All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. That's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Yes, the transfer portal is very intriguing when there are available players to go get, but at Penn State's prime positions of need, I don't know that there are many realistic targets even. Before we get back to that, I want to tell you about Locked On's NFL Mock Draft. It's now available, and it, you can check out the Ultimate Six episode series on the Locked On NFL Draft channel to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for each and every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle as well. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft now available on the Locked On NFL Draft channel via YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, Brian, so we talk about, hey, Penn State needs wide receivers. Penn State needs linebackers. Penn State's also trying to target top-line defensive linemen as well. Well, outside of some maybe select players, even in the case of, hey, who's that superstar they can go get as a potential replacement or a potential addition? Well, it, it, I, I don't try to me all doom and gloom, but I, ideally there's not that many good top-of-the-line players even. So even in a perfect world, Penn State has Boku dollars. They have all this NIL capital to spend. The transfer portal, for what it's worth, just isn't that great when it comes to wide receiver, mostly because a lot of guys are already off the board. You know, I know this was a while back, but let's take like an Evan Stewart, for example, transferred out of Texas A&M, went to Oregon. But when you when you look at those players, that that's what I mean. They they're either all committed already, or uh, so nobody else is going to enter. I, I'm looking I'm looking at this list, and there there's really nobody else, and specifically the wide receiver, uh, in addition to what we have with these with these scholarship and NIL situation. Yeah, they're already behind the eight ball. Uh, most of the kids, they kind of know where they're going before that portal opens, mm -hmm. and they've already contacted people. The NCAA's concept of once the kids get in, they can contact, that's garbage. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to jump in without a landing spot unless they're just truly dread, truly desperate. The mm -hmm. elite players don't have to do that. they got schools recruiting them from other teams. And I'm not saying Penn State should do that, but they're going to get phone calls too. Yeah. Do they have any visits lined up with anybody, Zach? I mean, any position that you know of for, out of the transfer portal? Linebacker. That's the there's the Tennessee linebacker Elijah Herring that they've been in contact yeah. with. Uh, they, at least that's who they've been in significant contact with. And then there's interest. But as far as like legitimate visits, like hey, he's going to be on campus. Unless it's completely behind the scenes, there is little to nothing that's been reported about any sort of official visits with transfer portal candidates. Penn State's just. We, we talked about this, depending on how you look at it, some people might say, hey, this isn't a bad thing. You're going to keep the roster intact, right? The retain the roar idea here to go along with this NIL fundraising. But at the same time, the, these, needs that they, these needs that they do have, they are real. Wide receiver, linebacker, since you moved Abdul Carter down, it, it's more of a want, right? I like the linebacker core, but I, I wouldn't characterize it exactly as a need. 
And there's always room for improvement at defensive line because if you can get a significant uh, if you can get a significant pass rusher in there, as you've mentioned, it, it certainly works out. And Colorado needs all the help it can get. But Penn State just does not play the transfer portal game. But on top of that, Brian, unless this new wave of players enters into the portal, which I don't think is going to happen since we've already, we've been through it for about a week, ten days now, Penn State is they're stuck. They are stuck. A- and between NIL and actually what is literally available to them in the portal it it's not going it's not going to change yeah i don't see the reason behind it though i, I i'm with you the options are pretty limited i looked at it before mm-hmm. the show and i just looked at it again a second ago and i'm like unless somebody's getting in that i don't know about maybe penn state does especially at receiver mm-hmm. they better have a lot of development between now and the end of august mm-hmm. because once the games begin if Penn State fans see the same type of stuff again this year, and maybe they won't. I don't know. No. The Boo Birds are going to come out because <laughs> I, I think it's going to get to that point. Like, we're tired of seeing not me able to throw the ball. I know that that's a rarity in that stadium, but I, in today's era, if you can't throw the ball, that's the one reason people will complain more than they, they want to see the ball in the air at all levels. Mm-hmm. So that, that would be the thing because like, they're going to kill most of the teams they play because their defense is so good and they can mm-hmm. run the ball. But if, if they get smoked, especially at home by somebody, you know, that's not going to go very well. Best case scenario right now, the way that it, I know this is an early prediction, Brian, but you're, you're right. A- Andy Kotelnicki, you know, did very well scheming players open at Kansas. And I, and I believe that he was, it, I mean, Penn State, Penn State had him at the top of the big, of, of the big board when it came to offensive coordinator candidates. So they went and got their their best candidate that was not only available to them, but their top target. So, okay, that that's good news. But I, I agree with you. And I've said this, that it doesn't matter who's all you said. Hey, it doesn't matter if Vince Lombardi is the head coach between NIL and the transfer portal. It doesn't matter if Andy Kotelnik is the offensive coordinator or Mike McDaniel, t- you know, <laughs> moves down, takes a demotion and becomes an offensive coordinator again and is calling plays at Penn state. You can only do so much with when defenses are just able to predict if you're so obvious, they can stack the box. They can play man-to-man on wide receivers if you're not getting open, pressure Drew Aller, and then you're going to have the exact same product. It doesn't matter who the offensive coordinator is. That's why I still think they got to figure out a way to get at least one kid uh, or or maybe move somebody from the defensive side to the offensive side or something like that. Drew Aller is being wasted comparatively to his talent until otherwise proven. And we yeah. haven't seen the new offense, and that guy can coach. I mean, he didn't yeah, have the same talent that other schools did when he was at Kansas. Man, I watched some of their games, and I'm like, okay, people aren't circling the Kansas Jayhawks football team on their schedule. The basketball team's a different deal. Mm-hmm. But they're coming out here, and they're dropping 35 on teams that have more talent. So that means your coaching and your scheme and the buy-in from the players is good. So if you're a Penn State fan and you're looking for a silver lining here, I would I would wager that barring something unforeseen, one of the receivers or tight ends takes another step to another level and can improve. That I don't doubt. But you still need a guy on the outside that the other team fears just because of his raw talent has and it's nothing to do with, you know, any coach at Penn State or otherwise. And we can't handle him one on one. Penn State doesn't have that guy. So then your offensive line your, and your running backs get a little more overwhelmed with what you said. Teams are going to put eight in the box. Mm-hmm. Prove to me you can beat us. They're, they're going to be challenged with that this year. Because they don't fear Penn State's downfield passing. Drew Aller can do it. We've seen him do it. But there, there are players that have the potential, Brian, but they are extremely unproven. We saw Amari Evans catch one deep pass from Drew Aller in that Michigan State game. That was against Michigan State game. That was an end-of-the-season game that just did not matter to the Spartans. So anybody was going to get open on that given day. But against when you play now, Ohio State, USC's defense a little bit questionable. That's fine. Washington, right? UCLA, you're going to face a better group of teams that are just not going to let that slide. Wisconsin, this isn't, hey, you have two games circled on your schedule. You now have to account for seven to eight, right? That are that now know how to how to stop Penn State after all the tape that was put together in 2023. And again, the Keandre Lambert Smith departure was bad. It's bad because you're already lacking at wide receiver. He was going to be a fifth year veteran. He was going to be a starter. If he was your third option at wide receiver, that is really good if you're Penn State. 
Now he's not because he's in the portal. Yeah, their depth has gone a little bit too. Maybe there's some addition by subtraction. Maybe some other kids will see the white. Uh, you know, I'm trying to look for something Hopefully. here. Hopefully. But, but on paper, this just looks really bad to me. Prove to me that I'm wrong. Um, you know, again, maybe it's a flex tight end or whatever, but they need somebody to be a threat on every play the teams fear. Right now, I don't think there is one. Well, we'll wrap it up with a little bit of high school recruiting back to the basis of your expertise, Brian, as Penn State is trending away from two primary targets. So a show that's filled with not so great news. We're going to end it on some not so great news. That's coming up next here on Locked On Nittany Lions. Today's episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. We've all been there either as a player or as a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard isn't looking so good. You're feeling low. You're not sure if you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep. You lift your head up and you say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists and take as much money of my friends as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but now on your phone anytime with tons of twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. You can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. You can make your friends go bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball and charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and play in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put your game face on, and download Monopoly Go. That's Monopoly Go, now available for free on the App Store and Google Play. And another sponsor on today's episode is Game Time. Have you ever felt the stress of buying last-second tickets? I know I have, but Game Time is changing the game. And when it comes to baseball tickets, they are the authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball. Prices on the app drop as Game Time approaches, offering killer last-minute deals, all-in pricing, and a view from your seat before you buy. Now, I've used the Game Time app to buy Penn State tickets. I've used them to buy baseball tickets as well. They always have incredible deals, including ones on upcoming MLB games. Their zone deals allow you to pick a section, but then Game Time will choose the best seats for you. They also have the lowest price guarantee and flexible ticket coverage. Take the guesswork out of ticket buying with Game Time. Download Game Time today. Sign up and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, that's promo code Locked On College. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. A quarterback and a wide receiver. Penn State is trending away from two key prospects in the class of 2025. Remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. Also, you know, join the conversation in the comments and let us know what you think about Penn State's plan in the transfer portal for this cycle. And in this final segment, Malik Washington, Jeff Exenor, quarterback wide receiver prospect that we have mentioned a lot on this show together, Brian. And those two prospects look like they are at least for the time being trending away from Penn State and trending towards Virginia Tech. I want to give credit to the reporting. HappyValleyInsider.com. Penn State Rivals was one of the first ones to was one of the first ones to point this out that after Virginia Tech's spring game. Uh, the Hokies made a strong impression, and that's Brent Pry, former Penn State defensive coordinator, as the head coach going in a head-to-head -head battle with Penn State here. Brian, I, I look at it this way. It, I, I, I think Brent Pry is doing an incredible job there. I am eager to see Virginia Tech at least make it back into a serious conversation. At least I don't think they're going to be a college football playoff contender year in and year out. But if they're 8-4, and four, maybe contend for an ACC title, if the ACC even exists in a year from now, two years from now after this conversation. Yeah, but I, I, I am eager to see them get back onto the national stage in some capacity to be a respectable team. But Brian, the way I look at this, with Exenor and Malik Washington as solidified four-star prospects, the way I see it, if Penn State really wanted to take their commitment, they would have by now. There are no other quarterbacks in this class of 2025 that I look at and say, yes, that's who Penn State should get as their second quarterback. And there are a few other wide receiver options that they're going after. I, so I understand that maybe Jeff Exner is not the priority. But when I look at Penn State versus Virginia Tech, if Penn State really wanted these players, they would have taken a commitment from them by now. Yeah, I wonder if there's just something going on there where they're just being out recruited, maybe like use the case 
for a quarterback, he would be the second guy in the class. Mm -hmm. Some guys don't want that. Uh, maybe Virginia Tech's path to playing time is a little easier. It is. It is. That's and, and that's if that's the case, you know, there's if you're James Franklin and your staff, yeah. there's not a lot you could do about that. Yeah. But at the same time, you can't lose kids to Virginia Tech if you expect to beat Georgia. That's the same barometer I use for every team, for every show I go on. Are you getting players that will help you close the gap with Georgia? It's a checkbox. Mm -hmm. Not winning a quarterback is not checking the box. So yeah. that's, that's my concern. Uh, Kritzka, he's a very talented kid. He's a lot of fun to be around, but mm -hmm. he's very raw. There's no telling how sure. good he's going to be. So I understood why Franklin was considering taking a second guy. And unfortunately, they haven't got it done to this point. There's still a ways to go. Maybe they could flip somebody. But right now, I'm, I'm a little suspicious of what's going on because they act – I mean, the coordinator they hired is a good – he's a good coach. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm a little surprised by this. But, again, it, there's a long way to go. Again, you have – you only have – we've talked about scholarship issues, right? Penn State keeps taking these big classes. If you're going to take 25, 26, 27 high school recruits – you know that that's going to that's going to really fill up the roster. So that's part of it. You already have a second quarterback. Wide receivers just been a problem over. This is going back to when Taylor Stubblefield was the wide receivers coach, right? This is kind of this this framework to get all the way back so that you can make up for the problems that were happening in advance leading up to this, right? If you let things go, the, the bottom's going to fall out, and that's where Penn State was. Taylor Stubblefield allowed the bottom to fall out at wide yep. receiver. So now Penn State has to make all this ground back up to just get just to meet the bar. That's that's the issue here. So, but I, Brian, I, I can't help but think I think Penn State is shooting for the stars with certain wide receiver prospects in this class of 2025, maybe even beyond. So they have preferences, and that might be the case with Malik Washington. Hey, I don't want to be a you know considered a second quarterback, right? I don't want to be an afterthought. I want to be the guy. Penn State's quarterback room, even after Drew Aller, is still going to be relatively crowded with Jackson Smolik and Ethan Grunkmeyer. Those are two former respectable high school recruiting prospects. But in, in this case, like I said, I, I just can't help and sit back and say if Penn State wanted these players that badly, they could get a commitment from them. Washington, on his own accord, visited Penn State 10 plus times. No official visits came to Happy Valley. You cannot tell me that he does not want to play at Penn State. You can't. Yeah, so they... They have something that's different there. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, maybe the connection's not the same with the new coaching staff on offense. Yeah, you maybe know. difference in offensive coordinators, right? Maybe he had a good relationship with Mike Yersich over the past two and a half years. And, and then in the case of Andy Kotal, Nikki, maybe it's just not the same. That That is very true. Very possibility. But if that's the case, they got one quarterback. So we'll see what they can do with that. That's going to do it for this edition of a Locked On Nittany Lions. Remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to the YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcasts. If you like this content, leave a like, share it with friends and family, and join the conversation in the comments section. Brian, I appreciate the time as always. We'll see if there's any other movement in about a week's time from now as the transfer portal has just been very quiet. But regardless, I am always appreciative and eager to hear your analysis on this show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And once again, thanks so much for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. Don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today available on YouTube and now on the free Fire TV channels app.